Um, oh, no. He's going to stay put. He's going to uh, attempt the scare. What do they have? Observation self. So I think he's just using his will to scare, which is a d12. Quick duck. That's a great. Oop. It's just a four. He's got a chance. Save us all before we die. Oh, Why helps those who help themselves? Mm. That's a very secular position you're taking. Yep. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't beat him. So uh, he can he resists the attempt at being scared silly. Um, and my stripped white is guarded and did his stunt. And that's it for my turn. It's back to you guys. Yay! Oh, uh, you forgot one. Did I? Where? Well, I mean, did the headless do anything? Also vile. No, headless guarded. Uh, he recovered and guarded, okay, and well, Vile uh, and stood nothing. up and recovered, yeah. Oh, that's right, he fell down. Got it. Yep, so it's your turn. Um, if y'all like, I could go ahead and try to see if I can zap all three of these in a row real quick for everybody. Yeah, you're, uh... That might be the way to do it. Start with How's the reeling that? guy, I would think. Yeah, starting with the reeling guy, let's see how it goes. Put it in the staff attack. There we go, okay. five high. Yeah, mm. uh, mm. he's rolling... Uh, 2d8 for speed and dodge. And an extra d8 to the range. A d8 for range. So 3d8 yep. and actually 4d8 because he's guarding. Yep, All right. so 5d8. Show us how it is. You dodged. We're done. Well, yep. the doctor also. I do have personality. I could go ahead and do it. And you know what? Now, now feels like a time. I think a third chance seems enough. Hit it. We're done. No. I can also re-roll and see if I do any better with Heck, yeah. 4d12. You know, I'll go for it. It just feels slightly yeah. important enough. Why not? And you do get to re-roll the personality. Yes, I do. That Damn. Is... Hey, oh, that's that came back so good. One, two, three. So that is six, ten weak damage. All right. Okay. Um, why don't you roll to hit the other headless male white? He's... This guy's probably been obliterated. Indeed. Just want to throw uh, out there to remind Ray. Even at maximum soak, he's I have so personality yeah. also. I might as well roll the extra d12 and anything could might happen. As well. You have Hit. to get a success on all dice. It's an 8. Nope. Okay. So 10 points weak, so you're probably killed. Alright, so this guy next. Uh, the headless one. 9. Sorry. Um, and this guy is 2d8, 3d8. Uh, he also has the range. So for yeah, so, well, you might as well roll personality, otherwise you've been hit. Oh, uh, right, and a d12 personality. Come on, there on. six points. And there's the 12. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Dodged it. All right. All right, so the stripped white That's was obliterated, the but the headless dog. Unless you cleared out your side of the field. That is, I, I feel a lot safer now, everybody. Oh, sorry. Who's next? Uh, I'm that. terrified. Well, I'm pissing my pants. Uh, I think Connor's fine, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Is that enough? That's not enough. I'm not used to this not having like a real scale on it. All right. Yeah, these... How wide are these? Are you using two meters wide for people? Yeah, they're probably a little bit big. They're like one point... Eh, like two, yeah. I usually use one meter for that, but hey, uh, I'm not, yeah. not going to talk about maps. I've stopped talking about maps. I it was a scale sure I thing. Each range when I engage the vile white. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because when I engage the vile white, I am going to go ahead and hit him with the teasel whip, since we're using whips today. Okay. Your only defense against this is to dodge. I'm going to tap. Ra uh, actually, I have focus, so I get three actions. So uh, I can move, attack, and aim while I do it. Okay. And I will tap rapid guard. So, He's all right. Dodging with his D8. I have a 12. Damn. Okay. So what's your damage total? Not a lot. Uh, two successes. What was your highest? Highest is three. So you got two oh, successes. Wow. That is a four point weak hit. Soak it twice. And did you include his hurt and reeling? I no, hurt and point. injured. Sorry. Right. Six point hit. So six uh, point hit. Soak it twice. And it's okay. So. Uh, I got 48. these record. Uh, okay. He soaked it. He soaked two. Then four, you are dying. Yes. Okay. And uh, let a, me just double check. But I think when they're dying, they're dead. Yeah. Uh, well, they're they're down, so don't even worry about yeah. it later. 
Right, they lose their undead status. Are they die hard? Status. Okay. Uh, do they have the gift of die hard? No. They do. Uh, no. Uh, what are they? Do they? No. They no, have they don't have die hard. They right. do have toughness, but it was already weak, so I can't tap it to make it weak. I know. Again. Isn't that embarrassing? I know. You guys have been using a lot of weak attacks. I haven't had any opportunity to use toughness, so. Uh, it, 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 it's pretty wacky. All right. You, yeah, no. Uh, whites are dangerous, but they can also be upgraded. Hmm. Okay. All right, that's, it. that's the end of me. All right. Well, uh, let's see here. Yokim will come here. Wait, let me get to an actual range he can get to. And attack the white from behind Connor. He is using a bill hook. Okay. Cannot counter, can only dodge. J -j. Bill hook, you say? Interesting. I feel like those things. Check can, his gifts. I feel like those things can grapple at range. They Bill trip. trip. They trip. Yeah. Gotcha. The strength. Pull you off stage. No, come on. D eight. There we go. Ah. Right. Dodgedged. Crap, boy. He's so grand. Corner tactics. Okay. So go in for that one. Okay. And this one he will counter. Me. Counter with a punch. We roll in that D12 from tactics. 4 to 11. You better hope your 1 D12 comes up a 12. <laughs> I do. For their personality. It is an 11, uh, which is a simultaneous hit, which I'm comfortable with. Um, I'll be doing two damage to you. All right. And you'll be doing three damage to me. Five. Five? Two? Two plus two plus crit. Five. I don't see the second success two for him. Plus two damage. Oh, I see the 11 down here. Yeah, okay, plus fine. crit. Five. Five. Uh, all right. Soaking with 2d8. Wow, botch six. Oh, so six lucky. damage, overkill. Uh, well, hold on. I can tap uh, toughness on that. Doing it again. Ah, yes, yeah, the first time you've been able to. I know, right? So that's one success. So that goes to four, which is still enough to kill him, uh, or at least put him down. Blarg. Oh, you have the dying. Yeah. Oh, Blarg. Okay, cool. Um, and you soaked. Yeah, you soaked well. You soaked my damage. You are still reeling, but that's that. Okay. Address and company. Well, what about uh, Connor's three other folks? What about them? They're going to continue focusing. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to recover from reeling, uh, and then I'm going to try and rally Taria. Rally. Cool. They're no longer reeling. There's no. Yeah, there's some counter range. Um, Taria's going to guard again and do nothing because I don't want to get counter attack. Uh, okay. Jackie is going to shoot at this one. I can't remember what the name is because it's underneath. It's frail. Yeah, the frail, right? Jackie's going to okay. shoot at that one. Alrighty. I'll be dodging. Here's my D8. Uh, they're going to aim as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Hup. Ooh, I'm liking these eights. Damn it. Alright, so no longer guarding. He may be frail, but he's spry. Uh, Rutherd is also going to aim and shoot at the same one. Okay. Oh, what's the gear icon mean again? You put on. The oh, uh, the gear. Yeah, that's just I already used his personality. Got it. All right, this Rutherd shot. Hey, okay, that's two hits. Oh, I didn't realize the four was here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Rutherd uses, I believe, a longbow. Yeah, longbow. So two hits and two supplies. So one, three, four damage. Four damage sounds about right. Well, one um, bonus plus one crit. So that's what I yeah. Damage. I think I'm right. I always usually think I'm right. It's false. No, but yeah, that sounds right. He doesn't have any, like, hurts on him. So uh, we'll tap toughness first. I'm going to soak twice against this for 48. And soak half of it. So two damage. So hurt reeling. Nice. All right. I think... Uh... Still Marina. 
Dalmarina is not going to guard. Uh, going to stride out. You know, token length. Yes. Uh, and attack. Yeah, okay. A great sword. Reeling so he can't counter. Um, so he'll just have to dodge. Or I guess parry. Can he parry with? Yeah, he can parry. Parry with a punch. Which he will. Do you have brawling <laughs> fighter? I think you need brawling fighter to be able to parry with punch. Uh, do they have brawling fighter? I mean, it's on the stat block. Let me see. Yeah, they do yeah, have brawling fighter. They do have brawling fighter. So go right ahead. That's it's what, just uh, a D &D hey, D &D it was six. just a question. Self defense initiated question. Plus D eight. Who? All right, it's still two hits Damn. for me. Um, okay. Let's see. That is great sword which is damage plus three. So five Yikes. plus your hurt. So six. Six. And you've already All tapped right. your toughness. And I already tapped my toughness. So there's really nothing I can do about this. I could soak it to four, but that would still put me down. So. still on hand. You could still throw that in your defense if you wanted. True, true. Okay, so here's my soak plus my personality. Oh, I does not do you it. threw it into your defense and not your soak, but whatever. Oh, right, yeah. Um, Would have been a 7 anyway. Wouldn't have helped you. Exactly. Okay, deadsies. Blah. All right, all right. Um, I think that you guys have successfully downed. You dislodged the white's teeth from Tyra, and it becomes uh, stiff. But, Doctor, you can sense still unholy energy coming from these corpses, even though they are no longer animate. Well, ah, uh, crack knuckles. Time to get to work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I will probably need to consecrate them at the very least. Uh, I assume with my mystic necromancy, my mystic white magic, all my supernatural, all my academics, and my brain, I probably <laughs> know what to do here, right? Um, yeah, we'll say that you know that you could burn the bodies, or you could use your consecration spell on them. That would also work. If right. you they were buried within consecrated earth. Right, I'm probably going to save the spell for later, because we're going in even deeper. So I will go ahead and recommend just pulling them together and burning them. And then I'll look at the ones that have ignited and burst into bits and go, I think they're fine. <laughs> yeah, they're probably okay. Um, they're just like embers on the snow. Um, yeah, I mean, the bodies are frozen corpses. It takes a while to build a fire that will sufficiently burn them. But after an hour of concerted effort, you guys are ready to be on your way. I just want to point out, with all the knowledge the Doctor has, does burning them actually work? Well, there won't be much left. Well, yeah, but the the text of the thing, you have to, like, name them, kill them, then bury them on consecrated ground, and that's the only thing that gets rid of them forever. It, it's, it's very much that werewolf question. It's like, well, a silver bullet will kill it, but if you completely tear it to ribbons, there's not much of it to come back. Well, there's also the question of what comes back, because even though you destroy the body, that doesn't mean they won't come back as ghosts. Well, it mm. also suggests if they like lose a body part, like a head, replace it with something other weird, like a pumpkin or something. So, right. assumedly, yeah, they might a bunch of the ground or... animates, you get Swamp Thing back to kill you. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, you know. They, they are a symptom of the evil in this area, and if we solve that, then we might solve this as well simultaneously. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, destroying that might also destroy them. I mean, you know. One, well hopes, spoken. one hopes that they're not a symptom of the rage and their, you know, their inability to prevent their own deaths or something like that. And they are a symptom of the necromantic circle. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, just ink. Right. These, these yes. undead happen to be here for a different reason. It's just coincidence. Um, well, I should have been rolling D12s. Pages around the area. These suckers were anonymous. They should have been rolling D12s in addition against your holy fire, right? Your ah, blast. Oh, there you it's go. It's okay. It wouldn't have made a huge difference. You were rolling a lot of D12s too, but oh, I'll remember for next time. Makes knowing their actual name that much harder. You can no. only kill yeah, us if you really say our names. names. By the way, we're anonymous. Right? Anonymous doesn't mean you don't have a name. It just means no one knows what it is. All right, when I get back to the uh, the Baron Milgard, it, it, it I'm going to suggest tag. that he starts putting name tags on all of his soldiers. Yeah, it, it it says in the finer text that if you call them by their name, they will acknowledge it and get and get pissed off. Uh, yeah, yeah, because... but you have to call them by their name and then kill them and then bury them. I'm just saying, the suggestion right. to Baron Milgard that perhaps uh, the next step of the war is you put name tags on all your soldiers. Well, we could search them mm. to see if there is anything identifying on them. Be sure before you get into a fight that you order all of your soldiers to write a letter home. Also, they have to put their name on the letter. 
Also, I guess, train all your soldiers in literacy. Yeah, that's the tricky part, making them all literate. My dearest Anushka, it, this war has been a hard-fought <laughs> one, and I yearn for your presence in my life once again. No, the worst part is, if we wanted to actually do the legit research and ask people, not only do we have to go find which tribe actually knew about them, we also have to be able to speak their language. Yeah. It's a big so it's impossible from our perspective. L let's go deal with the Hellmouth first, and then deal let's with Let's deal with the Hellmouth, so. Or whatever well, the thing is. The manageable problem. Yeah. The known um, unknown. The known unknown. I'm going to ask for a quick break here so that I can get some water. But then we'll, we'll press on. Drop us into right, the... Break. See you in a bit. So, back to the game. We still have some time. We are going to... Uh, you guys have rationed up. You have the supplies that you need to make this journey and the return trip. Um, put some... Uh, Barrow whites into the ground, into the snow. Well, burned them actually. At least their their corporeal forms. Um, you begin. You head around this. Uh, we need a name for this structure. Actually, these three peaks and this necromantic, this evil lake. <clears throat> but um, I, 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 I guess it's triple peak. Triple peak. Perfect. Okay. So, so you begin to valley on top of a plateau, right? Yeah, it's. Like, these three mountains, it's almost like one large mountain. It's these three peaks of a mountain, and in the middle of them, con they converge to make sort of a basin, right? And in the middle of this basin, a lake has formed. What was the valley called? Land Before Time? What was the... The Great Valley? I think they just called Great it the Great Valley. valley. Yeah. yeah. So it reminds me of... So they're they're the never a good name in the Land Before Time series. No. Tree stars. They don't know what leaves are. <clears throat> They don't. They don't have a word for leaves. For leaves. I think I figure they're supposed to be like making up the very first word for every first thing they, they come across. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to pick apart the logic of the land before time, because there's not much to pick apart there. Um, but really it's these leaves. things you think about. Uh, all right. So you guys are you are navigating around to the northern face of uh the uh, triple spire three spire um mountains and um you journey for another day and a half uh calamine the uh blessed seems to know her way around these areas and uh seems to be serving as an excellent guide to you it is in the morning of your second day she tells you that by nightfall you will be at the northernmost pass, um, and you've been on the road for, or you, you've been traveling for, uh, we'll say less than an hour. When she comes up short, uh, she holds out a hand and she gestures for all of you to be quiet, and she will point down um, just at the base of a, a shallow hill. You can see what looks like if you uh, really focus on it, it almost looks like a campsite that has been um, the victim of an avalanche. You can see what look like boulders, but are actually tents, mostly covered by snow. Um, she uh, will mutter and say, uh, this is a hidden Chevronace encampment. Um, it would be dangerous to, to go through, but we'll have to add considerable time to go around. Do we have the food to go around? You do. You're well enough supplied for it. Yeah, thanks to our previous uh, negotiations. So that's good. Yeah, let's not have faith then. Avoiding them would be good, but I do worry for them. We've seen what happened to the last Chevronet out here. Uh, Calamine will say it. It is a shame they are. Um, I mean. I know the perspective that they carry among those, uh, I guess, civilized folk of Calabria, but, you know, uh, they, are, they are people like any other. The fact that their home is being corrupted by these dark forces um, is still tragic in its own right. However, you've seen how dangerous they can be, I assume. Indeed. We do not exactly have a direct means of communicating with them either. Such a uh, she gives you a them. she gives you a strange look at first. I don't speak their language. Oh, oh, 
Um, she says, well, I have spent my life trading with them. Those that pass by, um, pass through my lands. I'm not an expert, but I, I can communicate on our behalf, if that is what you're thinking, Doctor. It is a possibility, but there's no telling if they may simply be hostile to us being here in the first place. More than likely. And I have known people who, when you tell them that all that they believe is wrong, you behave more aggressively. I would not want to risk your uh, life in such a confrontation. Or ask. <laughs> At least if we avoid them for now, and they are not, uh, they do not befall any darkness by the time we get back, maybe they can return to their village in peace. So around them and with haste is my suggestion. Well, we can Perhaps. get around them. They're guarding the entrance to the valley. So this is, uh, this is not. We're, you're not at the valley just yet. These guys have an encampment sort of at the base of the three spire, but that is an interesting point too. Um, if they are members of the necromancer Chevernace, um, it's interesting that they're here, sort of apart from the the main force. The main forces. Well, I mean, consideration is also that we're in a battle zone where they have clearly killed enemy combatant, so our presence alone is a threat, and might be met as such. Hmm, this is true. Right. All the better to deal with the necromancy first, I think. I understand that you're trying to come from the pacifist angle, but I'm trying to say that in a real world, we're probably going to get shot at. So what do you want to do, Gar? I mean, I don't think that we're going to be able to fight our way through the entirety of the Chevronets. I don't know what you call it. They're not a military. They're, like, just living here. And they just happen to be militant and asshole. Um, mm -hmm. This redneck encampment on the mountain hill. I uh, I just don't see any way through. These are people that are going to fight you for just being here. They don't want us here. Hmm. There are... Wooden, then, yes. I mean, are there are customs of trade. They weren't even happy when you returned to their kid. Do we have to trade? Yeah, well, I mean, a bunch of books. Sure, would be happy with that. That'd be a... <laughs> eating for a day. Hmm. Hmm. The um, if light is uh, like food for the hungry. I mean they they prize uh they prize weapons. Um. Specifically, they their master craftsman bow craftsman Fletcher's. This is coming from. Calamine, um, uh, she says, but um, the forged steel that comes from the larger cities, they don't have access to those. Many of them will trade for it or will raid uh, and, and steal them. But, you know, that's something that they do value up here. Thank but we you. do at least have some to spare, I suppose. I need to get do over we? my own hatred of these Chevrolets and try and speak more <laughs> diplomatically. <laughs> Well, you gotta figure, these are, like, the worst of, like, in my head, these are, like, the worst of the redneck and came. It's like, oh, we don't want any of those kind of people around here, and they got their own gated community, you know. So, to me, that's what the Chevronades represent, and it's just very much a, God, if I could get rid of them, I would. I'm actively working towards that right now, but... I don't think it's an unreasonable perspective for your character to have, uh, certainly. And you guys, like you said, you've dealt with them before, you know firsthand, they're not very pleasant people. So, I still would defer to both Gar and Sir Connor. What do you think we should okay. do in this situation? Okay, if you can get me into a negotiation position with them, I think I might be having a way in. I I can get you there. I can assist you in some way, but I don't speak the language. So That'll I'm not be... sure how that would yeah. carry through. This is a case for Cosmopolitan. Uh, if you have the cosmopolitan gift you could assist or you could use your other social gifts well uh, i think I that means that, yeah i would think that would mean the negotiation would be the doctor because he's cosmopolitan and has negotiation right uh yes that is correct okay yeah so i think the doctor and i should go do this because we're good with people i also have cosmopolitan oh well Ooh. everyone has it except the fool who apparently is like obnoxious enough to annoy the dead. You know, I do appreciate that. I go through an entire listing of all of my careers. 
<laughs> but all you ever seem to recall is the last one. Well, like for I the longest know. time, I ended the the list with it's merchant. Your calling to life. I ended but the list with merchant for the longest time. I was like, oh, you're a merchant, and now that I'm ending it with town oh, yeah. fool, you're like, oh, you're a fool. The fool the doesn't have the gift. The lowest is your careers. Well, I'm just pointing out that out of all of your careers, you've got nobility, which annoys commoners, and let's face it, the chevronets, and you've got fool, which is a professional annoying person. Um. No, if we were in the city, Gar, if we were in the city, uh, I, I would not be doubting your ability to fit in and get along with everyone else in the city and especially other nobles. Look, I'm laughing with the group. I'm just pointing out you're still going to call me a fool from now <laughs> yes. on because I have one career that has fool in the name. But you're also a career is not a bit of order. I think you're not actually a dilettante, are you? I am. It's my starting career. Oh, you are a dilettante. Okay. I started well, off in this world as a Hapless, no funny, it was rich, from a good family. All right. Did well, you actually pick up Cosmopolitan? Why don't you stay no. here with the armed mob and hang back while we go to talk to them all nice and civilly and not look scary? I don't guess. Okay. So. All right, fine. Well, I mean, as I said, you don't have Cosmopolitan, so. Right, but now, I have the negotiation you... point, but whatever. I don't you need can... me. I've been eating well, up said... a lot of screen time today anyway. Go ahead. Go. Let's go. Um, I yeah, shoot them well, out. I think the next thing to do is we should get you Cosmopolitan, and that way we'll be the entire Cosmopolitan. We can go anywhere. We'll travel sure, the entire travel lot. of Calabria. I've got allies you know all over Calabria. I don't... Just go. All right. Okay. All right. Um, Calamine will say... Um, will say that uh, she'll go first, and um, it's possible that she's met them or dealt with them before, and uh, she can, you know present herself as a blessed one typically they don't they try not to harm the blessed because it's you know superstitious knowledge that you shouldn't probably do that shouldn't mess with magicians of course so um she will cross over to the clearing you can see her you're probably at like um medium range uh, and you can see as she approaches um several figures sort of emerge from hiding places within the dunes and this like the snow dunes essentially um they have weapons drawn on her she puts her hands out up and uh a an old hunched uh chevronace will uh is step out and speak to her they exchange some words um and then she will turn and gesture to the rest of you to come forward um as you cross out though this old chevronace uh, moves with surprising speed, gets her in uh, like a headlock. Man, yeah. gets her from behind it and holds a a dagger to her throat. Uh -oh. At this point, you guys are about uh, your sh uh, we'll say short range away from this group. Three Chevronets, your blessed one. One of them, who seems to be the leader, has a dagger to her throat. No one moves. What do you do? All right. I will go ahead and, you know, I'll dramatically, like, throw my staff to the ground, you know, just demonstrate, like, look, I'm an, I'm an unarmed priest. What are you going to do to me? <laughs> yeah, okay. So I like first it. Move. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, have our, our blessed translate for me. It's like, we come to not mean harm to you. We come to warn you of the present dangers around you. Okay. All right. There's a an exchange and she says she calls back to you um uh he says that this is uh uh foreigners drop your weapons and um step into the camp you have no chance of outrunning us we'll hunt you down I I've already disarmed exactly um I'll disarm I, I mean yeah and I'll disarm okay and That's this group, I mean. by the way, I don't think includes Adris and his people. Um, I don't know. Does it include Connor's people? They'll be back with Adris' people. So you're a group of like four or five right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. A group of that size. So uh, and is Connor going to disarm? Yes. All right. Um, there's another exchange between the two. Um, and she says, okay, and you can sell that she's kind of, of shaken now. Uh, he says, uh, um, step forward and uh, 
bring your weapons with you, or actually, well, I said disarm them. Um, he says, yeah, step away from your weapons, come into the camp. All right, I, I'm proceeding. Okay, as you walk, you can see two chevronets. They both have long bows unslung, and they've got arrows. They're not holding them on you, though. They're marching past you to where you've dropped your weapons, and it looks like they're going to be collecting them. Uh, but no one it makes any moves to harm you or Calamine until you guys are comfortably within conversational distance, we'll say of, like, near range. Right. Um, <clears throat> Calamine translates, um, they want your they want your weapons and your provisions and adds um I'm sorry I well I haven't I haven't spoken with these this particular tribe before I'll just nod and hey, don't don't worry we'll we'll work this out with them I <clears throat> uh perhaps we should converse first then and I'll ask um ask them do you know of the dangers that are at this mountain presently there are dark forces around here, and they've already consumed Chevernay to the south of here. Um, the reply is grunting and guttural, and uh, we'll dub it for your benefit and for my benefit. Yeah, um, that he's is one going to say... converse to each other so that we don't have to continually describe that. Indeed, indeed. So uh, he says, "Indeed, dark forces." Uh, not least of which is your uh, meddlesome uh, lowlanders coming to steal our uh, steal our resources, our women, and um, oh, oh yes, uh, we know of the, the the evils of which you speak, but um, we had no trouble with the three spire mountains until you uh, interlopers came with your magics. I can tell you, as I have studied it long, that it is not anyone's fault what is happening right now. Rather, it is on a cycle. Every hundred years, it wells up again and unleashes itself. There are outsiders who are seeking to interfere and to worsen it. However, I am here to put an end to it, to help you and this area as quickly as possible before it gets out of hand. If it does, I fear for what could happen to you and all who live all right, all right. I think you guys have made a good show of it, and I think that's a reasonable argument. So let's get a negotiation roll. Um, let's do it. Uh, will or mine? Um, will. What do we normally use Will for? I feel like Will is a weird one for me. Okay, so I'll just do mine. So uh, uh, it, It's down as Will is personality and emotion. So if it's you're dealing with emotions, it's Will. If you're trying right. to reason with someone and be logical about it, it's mind. That's why negotiating with somebody in combat is both mind and will. So right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like will is like your heart and mind is your mind. That makes that that breaks it down better. Okay. I'd say in this case, you're not trying to appeal to his uh, emotions. You're trying to appeal to his logic. So let's go with mind and okay. negotiation. Um we're gonna roll some difficulty, uh, some some counter difficulty dice here. Um, and we're taking more than five minutes to talk and sit down and explain things, so diplomacy applies. All right. Two D eight. I'm not. I don't. Just to gifts. keep the scene, they still have a hostage, so you guys aren't drinking tea or anything like that. But this conversation yeah. is an ongoing one, and it involves a translator. Diplomacy could work. <clears throat> Let me see what other gifts I have to help with my assists here. I think I'm just pulling the seat. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I got one assist from Anushka so far, helping with the story. We'll see how Connor does. You get a D8 from me. All right, that's a D8. This is a fair bit of dice here. Let's go All ahead right. and roll it. Let me roll mine first so we know what we're rolling against. Sure. Jesus, okay. Versus rolling three, against I a think, three. Yeah, I think okay. I can do it. I think you can do it. Let's see how you get. Uh, one, one, two, three. Two, three. Nice. Yeah. Three successes. Well, okay. reasoned argument. All right. So uh, we'll lay it out here. Um, he seems to take heed. He does not associate you with the uh, either the Necromancer or the White Ridge uh, invaders. So you've managed to accomplish that much, at least. Um, 
he uh as the conversation goes he sees the value of the blessed as more of a translator and he will uh release his dagger from her throat um even though you guys are all keenly aware of the taut bow strings around you ready to be loosed at any moment if you should try to attack um but this is what he will convey um he says uh yes uh the tribe first of all he'll say that the uh the the lake was had lain dormant it has until recently but it coincided with the arrival of an outsider a non chevernace who uh wielded dark and powerful magic um the tribes were instructed to stay away they're very superstitious but um apparently one of them did not heed this warning and now has and now have made an allegiance with this character whoever he is um this is a uh, an affront to all of the the chevernace they realize that this is an existential threat to them too now and so this particular tribe um we're going to call them the cobalt tribe hmm, has been scouting the region for several days um looking for weaknesses, looking for an opportunity to uh, attack and lay to rest this dark necromancer. Um, however, they're still not uh, in the business of joining forces with outsiders. Um, with your three successes, which is pretty good, you get the sense that they are interested in your help and willing to help you but again, they have this cultural thing where they need some sort of a uh, a trade. They're gonna need something for from you, even symbolically, um, to help maintain that they are doing that they have the upper hand in this bargain. Right. We do still have some supplies, uh, and they were thinking of taking it from us anyway. So they've already expressed what they would want. From so, uh, there is the reason that we could go ahead and trade some of that then for their assistance. Okay. And that seems, uh, <clears throat> amicable. That seems like it, it will work for him. If you offer <clears throat> to share your supplies, <clears throat> um, he'll say, uh, he'll, he'll offer to share some knowledge that they have of the scouting that they've done. Um, also, one of the other Chevernace, kind of like the right-hand uh, woman to this guy, um, has been eyeing a piece of equipment that one of you carries. Uh, let's see. It's probably one of Connor's swords. Dun, dun, dun. Well, Connor, what are you packing right now? I know you have a, a... Is it a saber or a scimitar? A saber, a buckler, a mace, knife, and dagger. All right she she's interested you can see that she's interested in this saber she thinks it's very cool she's looking at it she's saying meaningful things to the uh the chief here um and uh he mentions that this seems to be a, a fine blade and it would probably be more effective in the hands of a skilled warrior such as his friend here mm. How about a test to see who is the finer warrior? Hmm. A duel? Yes. Um, the rather tall goat woman seems uh, intrigued by the proposition. And um, yeah, he'll say, um, well, what will be translated is that um, uh, a duel is a, a fine way to determine this thing. Uh, the Chevronet's duels go until the... Uh, the user is no, or or one side is no longer able to is no longer able to continue it's not till first blood or even till like first touch certain duels that you would have had in more civilized or tournaments this is kind of a brutal thing so we're going to the first in oh you're cutting out there oh no uh sorry hold on going let me do a quick drop injury? off yeah it would be a duel to the first injury and they're chuckling like this is a uh, these soft lowlanders probably can't handle it. <clears throat> Give me a quick second. I'm going to rejoin the call. Quick, while he's gone, uh, make a bunch of official GM statements. I have returned. Welcome back. Ah, too soft. 
<laughs> so yeah, so are you wanna you wanna duel this lady? Sure. Oh Kidoki then. Uh I'm gonna drag out a token for her onto the main map in the corner here. Let's give her a name. I've been pulling a lot of female names lately. Oh sure, I like that. Young Ernia. Ernia. Okay. All right. Young Arnia is going to grab a shield and a spear um, and square off with you in uh, a bit of a, uh, a clearing. Well, it's not, there's not a lot of clear space here. Um, no, nah, it's okay. They, they have a clearing that they can use that you can use. Um, and she's going to uh, begin the uh, fight by shouting and basically flinging herself at you with wild abandon. Uh, uh, do, will they let me use the saber or must they use a different weapon? No, you can use whatever weapons you want. I think it probably will be like one weapon per, but like the buckler, uh, she's fighting with like a weapon and a shield. You can fight with like a weapon and a shield as well. All right, I'll use a buckler as a shield. Okay, cool, cool. I just realized there's one thing I want to look up really quick. Um, this is the wrong book. Weapons. Okay. So yeah. It looks like she wants to like she's gonna charge you. Um if you want we can roll for it. If you wanted to take the first action. And that's fine, I'll uh well if we're You'll take the counter basically. Yeah. Well I'll, I'll take the Thank guard and parry basically if I can. Right. Well, you know what we normally do is we start focused because everyone when we do duels, right? So yeah, you can get a free, you can get a free uh, interrupt to guard if you'd like. Um, yeah, I'll do that. And Perry. Okay. Cool. Interesting. All right. Yep. Cool. So yeah, she's attacking you at reach with this spear. The spear. Is I think what is it plus one impaling spear? Oh, a long spear is plus two impaling. Let's do that. And she's rolling two d ten. You've already rolled your parry. Well done. You've already got a twelve. So this is not going to go through. But here we go. Shazam. Okay, parried. You easily knock the spear away. Um, she's going to use her other action to guard. Guard. She's no longer focused. Um, you know what? She should have also used an action to aim an attack and roll another d12. And it didn't matter. All right. That's her action to you, Connor. All right. Dash forward because she was using a reach weapon. Indeed. And attack. Okay. So you're no longer guarding, right? Right. So let me take that status off. All right. Okay. She will... Uh, try to dodge your attack um what do what does a, a normal like what does a wooden shield grant in terms of cover dice d8 d8 okay so she'll roll a d8 and a d10 dodge damn another 12 you roll an oh oh jesus crispy christ okay oh my goodness okay she's gonna tap her toughness but it probably won't matter for all of this uh because that's four successes it's critical that becomes six successes it's damage plus two that becomes eight successes and that's that... nine don't forget that attack or counter that that was my strength roll uh gosh gotcha. yeah at the that lower one one two three four five oh yeah five no you're right okay so damn so nine successes jesus um you know what i think we're gonna use uh What's that save? There's a shield's destruction, or like an uh, equipment destruction save? Yeah, it's shield save. It's uh, tap that, and uh, you're fine. Uh, however, if you have a wooden shield, it's shatter. Yes, the shield shatters. Okay, um, and that's once a scene, so you're at least, so you're done. Yeah. And the shield shatters, so you've lost your shield. Exactly. Uh, cinematic. I know, right? Um, okay, cool. So, Connor, this blow, you realize, caught her at an awkward angle. If it wasn't for this shield, she probably would have taken an arm off or something like that. And now she's pissed. Uh, so let's see here. 
Okay. She's going to uh, step back and thrust again with this spear. Although it's becoming quite clear that she is outmatched. I got an eight, though. Oh, Perry. Ooh, tie. But because you're, uh, you win parries on ties. So yeah, it looks like a good, uh, solid blow straight to your vitals, but um, you managed to turn it away with the use of your buckler combo. Uh, it's back to you. All right. If I were to have, use my etiquette and cosmopolitan to convey that I have knowledge of their customs, mm. I don't want to kill this woman, and I just demonstrated that I almost did. You know, mm -hmm, if it mm -hmm. weren't for you, I would have. So, um, would that's yeah. Bowing out and sparing her cost me this contest. I like that. Mm, mm, yeah. So, because the specifics of their custom is brutality, I think bowing out would be a show of. It would be a show of weakness. You could surrender and surrender the sword if you bow out they're basically going to say oh okay you don't have the courage to keep fighting which means you lose the sword you lose the contest but no one has to get hurt right i think the way to i think the your other option here is to start pulling your punches if you're not if you're afraid you might kill her you could try doing like knockout strikes if you render her unconscious that's as good as an injury so all right so what we're gonna do is uh Spend this round to put away the saber, draw the mace, and that's my actions. Got it. Okay, cool. All right, then since she's still at range, uh, she's going to aim this next attack and, yeah, attack once again 2d8 and d12. Wow. It's been highs and lows for me all day. And for you, it's just been highs. Jesus. This is like your 8th 11 you've rolled. Okay. And a 12. Yeah. Even uh, though she's still fighting uh, fervently, uh, it's clear that there's no... The skill levels are just unmatched here. She can't break through your defense. Step forward, back into range. And I don't have a knockout strike gift, so we'll still do a knockout strike. That just makes the damage weak. Right. I you think you score st two successes for it to be a knockout strike. Yeah. Did you score Which two? Shouldn't be a problem. He I hasn't rolled yet, yet, but he will. All right. If you only score, if you're going for a knockout, that that's that's a fancy rule called the called shot. If you're going for a knockout strike, you have to score two. If you only score one success, you will miss. Yep. And she's dodging. And I'm going to use. Because I have a Kimbo, I have favor. I'm going to be rolled at D12. Oof, okay. That is one, two, three, four, five. Because you rolled the D12 was the one, right? Yep, yeah. okay. So yeah, man, five successes, damage plus two, but it's weak. So it's seven successes, but she's soaking twice. So she's rolling 40 tens. Come on. One, two, three, that soaks it to four damage. So yeah, you you crack her extremely well. Falls to the ground. She is more than unconscious. She's dying. It's not dead. If, and, if uh, I had the, um, the critical weapon, that would have been so much worse. Do you have yeah. a first aid? Or no, mechanics? I do not. Well, then you could try to yeah. do first aid. It would just be your mind roll. Don't fuck. I or you could sit to... there and wait for their second, which they should have, to rush in there and make sure they're not dead. Yeah, don't let that happen. Right. I imagine I'm probably your second year just to make sure you're not dead. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully um, they can stop them from dying. Are you making any moves? Uh, because, yeah. Connor, are you. He's putting you his weapon away and backing off with his hands. Up, oh. smart, wise. Okay, the chief is going to walk over as well as one of the others. They're going to check her vitals, and um, it doesn't look like they're doing a whole hell of a lot to uh, stabilize, Doctor. Yeah, it's I, you got to rub you the wrong way. Yep, you are stepping you. in. Yeah, I am stepping in. 
Uh, and I'll just go ahead and shout me the light preserve you and uh, try to rally dying to. Oh man. That is one, two, three successes. So well, did you dying roll, did, to fatigue. Did you roll an eight or better? Uh, I don't have to. I'm rallying. Well, but but you're rallying an unfriendly target. Yeah, it doesn't come up a lot, but rallying an unfriendly target requires eights or better. Wow, eights or better. Okay, damn. They're unfriendly. Oh, in that case, I'll just go up and do first aid. Yeah, which I mean, is even better. Yeah. Well, I mean, this this magical rallying is better, but yeah, you have to roll eights or better for unlucky targets. All yeah. right. In this, and you're gonna get some looks these guys are like what the hell are you doing all right so that is okay uh, he's a, he's a healer and d10 just to clarify i don't have first aid up usually because i usually expect to do this first aid bonus go. 12 yep here we go 10 all right that's that good you your body speed and species your three physical traits and a bonus d12 try to nice. roll four better yeah hey, you're not Six. dead not My dead. You're still unconscious with a result like that. I'd have to look it up. Uh, I'm sure the car has it open already. Not bleeding to death. That's the important. Right. Right. Uh, it's right here. Okay. It was six. Well, Dying yeah. with hurt, injured, afraid, confused, and sick. Um, she's quite disoriented, Doctor. The Connor left a, a serious mark on her head. Um, and cracked one of her. Uh, I guess girl goats would have like the little horns i don't know much about goat anatomy but they, anyway they have, the big, they have the big ones they have the ones that curl around right. they do Insert okay cool. comment about this being sir connor's lightest touch <laughs> there you well, go like and you look me sword, right the uh the chief and his other attendant the second for this girl uh ernia exchange sort of impressed and meaningful looks and they nod and they say um translated of course you have uh, proven yourselves to be worthy allies in this cause. Come, uh, should Ernia survive, she can join us once she has um, recovered her senses. They turn their back on her and kind of leave her sitting in the snow trying to get her bearings. But they'll lead you to one of these hidden tents, these buried tents. Um, inside, they will share with you maps that they have drawn of the region. They will point out that there is a fourth hidden passage into the valley that um makes use of a uh an old cave like a, a a hidden cave um it was known to their tribe's ancestors apparently and no one else including the current tribe that occupies um ah fascinating they say that the um what did i say the froststone tribe are uh well defended and fortified with these this dark mage um and because of that attacking from any of the passes in is suicide especially considering that you all are well garbage on mountainous terrain um you'd be riddled full of arrows long before you came within uh fighting range even with your fine sabers and uh yes um do you guys have any questions for the chief of the Cobalt tribe? I take your silence as no questions. Well, they told us where the Triple Peaks Evil was, right? If I, if I heard them correctly, right? Uh, they gave uh, you a, a secret passage yeah, into the basin. That's a secret passage, right? So that's the way to get there. Yep. Uh, Rod, I'm trying to think uh, what we can do. Uh, to improve diplomatic relations. Well, so you've already um, made some sort of pact with these guys. You're going to give up some of your supplies um, oh. to them as part of this deal. And as this deal, they're sharing information and they agree to fight alongside you. Although okay, the cat well, there is they are waiting yeah. for the auspicious moment. So yeah. they're not going to move in right now. They're probably going to move in within the next three yeah, to I, five I, days. I, I, I can't think of anything else. Here, take this flyer. It's a map to where you can buy really good wine. There you go. <laughs> the chief looks at it and, like, looks at you and then takes a bite out of the corner and then gives you a, a nod, like, mmm. 
I don't Delicious. know why you would do that, but uh, the way of goat to Ken, the mind of goats is madness. Um, so yeah, no, it sounds like they told us, uh, and, and we didn't have to kill anybody. Uh, so good job, Connor. Goats we yeah. are, less goats we become. Just concussed yeah. someone, but you know it's what? They'll live to fight another day. day. Thank you, Doctor, for saving a life. Ah, all of the day's work. We'll have to talk about you pulling your punches. And that was a pretty good pulled punch. Yeah. But but we do have our instructions, we have our goal, we have ourselves all rallied up and ready to go. They've returned the weapons that they didn't take. <laughs> yeah, and they will take some of the provisions instead. Are you keeping... So, Griff, are you keeping track of your provisions? I've kind of lost track, I've just been keeping track in terms of right. ranges. Well, we got new... Well, I haven't been keeping particular track because there's like 20 of us and I'd have to multiply every number out by this, etc. Uh, right. We've never had those specific numbers anyway. We've been doing by range again. Yeah. So uh, I'll say with this, you can make it, you'll have to resupply at White Ridge or the last leg of your journey south will right. be a, a really hungry one. Right. We, we got to go to White Ridge again. We can't just avoid it and go somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's acceptable. We'll just fight two arm. <laughs> All right. Uh, when we get up there. They have a musket line. <laughs> okay. So, um, right. So these these chefs, they're waiting for some sort of auspicious sign. I don't know if it's a star sign or if they have an oracle or something, but. Um, they say that the time is not yet right to attack. They think it'll be in the next three to five days. They're not sure, though, because it has not been foretold yet. In the meantime, though, they will agree to send scouts with you if you want to find the passage and move ahead on your own. Although they um, believe that this is suicide, even for one as talented and skilled with a blade as you are, Sir Connor. Appreciate your concern. Even even if we do want to wait for their help, we should get there and get eyes on the problem and figure out what we need. Right, we need to plan our approach. So up through the cavern, and hopefully they don't have anyone hanging out. In yeah, the cavern is um, invisible except from a very certain perspective. The climb is arduous, and your uh, scouts seem to think that this should take much less time than it is actually taking you. They are quite uh, exa exasperated. Yeah, Ex yeah. They're they're fed up with the slow pace. Several times you think you've lost them all together, but they then you do come across them sitting perched on like precarious outcroppings of rock. They almost look completely vertical. You're not even sure how it is that they manage to stay attached to this wall here. But they look at you with bored expressions and then press onwards. Um, if there was any kind of uh, danger here, I would have people make climbing rolls, but um, with enough time and enough broken fingernails, you guys make it up to this passage. Uh, the caves are dark and cold, and there's a constant whistling noise as wind from the mountainside um, echoes through. Uh, but it's a relatively short passage. It takes less than 15 minutes to cross from uh, this angle of cliff through to the other side. And when you emerge, you can peer out over this basin, um, which is forested by evergreens. Those of you who are flyers have seen this before. And you can just make out a break in the tree cover where this large uh, frozen lake sits in the center of this basin. There is also, you can see smoke from fires on the far side of the lake. Fires? That's weird. Um. I say fires, I mean like campfires. That's still kind of weird. Is I didn't know weird? they were here. Well, the necromancers here, at least. Ah, vile necromancers. Well, soon they will taste steel. Right. I've seen we what should... Connor looks like with his full fury on leaf. Uh, so, wait, no one is here, just the fire. Hmm. Unattended campfires? Oh, no, Don't no, it's not that. Okay, okay. You guys are, are looking from this uh, cave entrance basically onto this vista. There's this forest that extends out below you, and you can see the lake 
um, nestled in the middle of it. And you can see smoke from fires. So you know there's locations of where there's probably campfires, at least. You can't see anything specific, though. Um, I guess, do you guys just want to head towards the lake itself? It's the largest landmark. My recommendation, of course, is that most of us stay still and someone goes on a stealthy scouting mission. Who actually has any? Stealthy Answers scouting? None of us. I'm checking oh, my no, regulars. I do. Oh, you do? Well, Nishka, if you think you can do it, then you could go ahead and check out the campsites and give us the heads up. It's risky. It would be tipping my hand, but I could do it. Right. This, this is an evaluation of, is that risk worth it? Uh, I think we should... Um... Well, if they have fires, it implies that they're alive because they care about being warm. Very true. So um, that's actually a good sign because if they bleed, they can be killed. Um, Poor reasoned with. Do you think if we just approach them, they might just give up? Uh, it depends on how many are here and how how prideful they are. Yeah, well, they're necromancers, so they normally don't give up. Uh, I could try to sneak into the camp. I'm not... Uh, um, it's not impossible. If you want me to, I will. Right. Um, the Connor alternative and... here is to use our advantage for a surprise attack, where we don't know exactly what we're going into. I mean, Connor and Gar, the seniors here... By the way, do we, uh, how many new abilities do you guys have? This is the one. More than you I might think. Gar's think. up to you now. How yeah, about you, Gar? I said more than you might think. <laughs> so, more than one. Yeah. That Gar is probably the highest ranking person here. Do you want me to go in there and investigate? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll do it. Uh, I will wait for the cover of darkness. Okay. The scouts that are with you ask if you can find your way back. Um, They're not going to follow you into the basin yet. They're going to leave you here and head back to their encampment. Uh, I can navigate blindfolded. Nice. Okay. Say that without irony. Yeah. So you wait until nightfall and then you set out, uh, you fly over the uh, yeah, do you mean forest, a check? the lake. Yes. Why don't you give me a stealth? Um, oh. Speed and stealth, right? Nice. Yeah, there we go. I actually I suppose you have... have the cover bonus from darkness to the roll. Well, we can worry about that later. I yeah. mean, I might have a cover bonus unless they have guys with night vision. I have one success. That is enough to sneak. Um, and usually the way I handle stealth is like, if you have at least one success, this is how far you get before you push it. Not, you know, right. DD usually does an automatic detection, but there's also supposed to be a sidebar rule in there. You know, you get within like medium range and decide, oh yeah, getting any closer, I would get spotted. Yeah. Um, it's, but that's up to you. So Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like that interpretation. You know, but I mean, so... like I'll go and take a look and see what I can see. Uh, yes. I'm avoiding echolocating because echolocating sets people off. Exactly. It is the opposite of stealth. It is noise. So yes. um, you uh, here's how close you get. This is what you can see. You get close enough to uh, the lake. You can see that there is um, there are fires. Uh, there seems to be like a small encampment on the far side of the lake. Um, one large sort of chieftain's tent and many other smaller tents around. They have like the equivalent of tiki torches um, set up. You can see there are uh, multiple figures milling around, all of whom uh, seem to be alive by the amount of clothes they're wearing and by the fact they tend to congregate close to these the fires. Um, well, there's also another hint. Um... They, when they exhale, mist comes out. They breathe. They, yes. Um, you can see them communicating and breathing. Um, and you, as you are uh, approaching closer, you can see that there is one uh, figure standing at the edge of this large lake. And I mentioned this before during the other scouting. You feel like you see movement, like a shadow of some large creature moving or, or shade or a current or something moving under the surface of this frozen lake. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, I hate lake monsters. Yeah. That's all that you uh, can see without crossing into the area where the light from these all these various fires might illuminate you. So how many do I think... Uh, I'll do a rough count. How many do I see? Um, 
you'll see you'll see a dozen a baker's dozen you'll see 13 about, about and about, about, about these more. okay yeah hmm and how are how are they uh, armed are they uh, wearing leather or metal they're wearing leather and they are um the chevronace right the way that i have been describing them is they have these like large furs that they wear that kind yeah. of make them look like you know um what are the sand people from star wars or something like well they might uh i mean they might be wearing quilted gambesons because um they do shed so i mean what yeah. else are you gonna do with all that wool there you go so you can imagine that they are armored um but it's mm-hmm. also they're wearing well i guess in this game right there's rules for wearing layers on top of layers it's to this and an encumbered well, I mean, consideration. You can, you can hand wave over. I mean, like basically, I'm just looking at like there's a dozen fighting people. Like they look yes. like hardened veterans. They stand. They carry themselves well. They're not stumbling over stuff. They don't look like militia people. They look like twelve hardened battle people. And I don't see anybody who's obviously a necromancer, right? You see one individual. He is also Chevronace, but he is wearing the distinct black robes of a necromancer. There we go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't have mystic uh, necromancer, but I do have supernatural. So um, gotcha. I'm pretty yeah. sure I know what a black robe is. Yep. You've okay, so it is a local Chevronets. I thought maybe it might be imported, but that, that would explain why they're not, you know, immediately getting attacked or anything. They're actually locals. I mean, not that the Chevronets like each other. All right, so 12 of them. Yeah, they, they told us that this was a, a tribe that uh, is different than the one at the foot. Yep, they're different. I mean, different. Well, they're reanimating the dead. Doesn't get much more different than that. Um. If you could get rid of them, we would thank you. I mean, after all, we're Chevronets. Getting rid of any other tribe, we would thank you for doing it. Yeah, that's what the Cobalt tribe is here for. Well, actually, I think it's a little different. It's like, if you got rid of other tribes, we wouldn't thank you, but we wouldn't disapprove of the action. However, these are necromancers, so we would actually approve of it. The highest honor that can be bestowed upon us. Yes. We would never thank a lowlander, but we might not shoot you either so that's the nicest the thing anyone's lines. offered me all day um yes. uh all right and of course and once again i don't see anything obviously out of the ordinary like a cannon or a breeding pit or anything no 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 you don't find you don't see uh guns these these they seem to be equipped the way the chevronets are which is they're sporting longbows and spears um yeah, and it doesn't look like there's well, any they've kind also of like, got engine. Boats, that's good to know. Okay, I will yes. come back, you know, and report that, yeah, there's about 12 of them. They all have ranged weapons, as near as I can tell, and there's definitely an necromancer. Uh, but there's no giant evil tree or altar or anything weird like that. So, I mean, it's no, but, oh, but what I will say is that as as you're leaving, you're like, okay, I've seen what I've come to see. You're on your way back. You're almost out of line of sight of the uh, of the encampment when you hear this um, bone shattering cracking noise. It echoes around the peaks. It's the kind of thing that you would imagine could cause avalanches. Um, and when you look behind you, you can see that there is now uh, a large crack in the ice of the lake. Oh, uh, great. It doesn't seem like anything else is happening, but it's strange, and it was loud and noteworthy. Okay, yeah. By the way, there's also a monster under the lake. Uh, that's not great. It's good that it hasn't jumped up and uh, done anything yet, and maybe it'll we'll stay there. For a moment. We already knew about that, <clears throat> right? Okay. Um, well, it's legit. I I, ver- uh, uh, I I verify that there is a monster under the lake. Right. So there is the monster. There's about 12 people, and there doesn't look like there's anything that necessarily is going to happen in three to five days. Well, the monster might get loose. That is a concerning prospect. So, tactically, what do the two noblemen in charge think? Sorry, I hate Mm. being that guy. You are that guy. Shut up. uh, You are being that guy. Don't lie to me. No, I hate to be that guy. Sorry, I've been dealing with, like, medical stocks on the side while you guys were doing your right. your uh, right, right. negotiations so I was kind of unfocused so I don't really know what you guys have uncovered and the thing that you said the, exactly what we just said is the situation yeah so I can recap the... there's, there's a dozen, guy, dozen guys one necromancer yeah. lake monster uh, all 12 of them appear to be fighting men armed with uh, or fighting people armed with uh, ranged weapons and melee and they look like seasoned veterans to me 
And I think I so, picked up before that people you guys negotiate with aren't going to help us until it seems the turning point. They're waiting for a sign. Yeah. We'll, we'll yep. be camping out here for like a week. So, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want to go in. How are we composed? How many fighters, uh, fighters do we have? Well, technically, uh, Potter is a fighter. Uh, Randy is a fighter. Rio Kim, I mean, um, yeah, my three raccoons are ne'er do wells. Hmm? My three raccoons are ne'er do wells, so they're okay. not good for fighting. So you've got two blooded, and Gar, what, uh, you've got nine people. What do you, uh, how many of them two are? Two doppel soldiers, a hunter, a ranger, two bodyguards. Okay. So, okay, so there's 11 of us who can fight, and 12 of them plus a necromancer. So, I mean, we could do an assault. We've got basically one to one odds. We can't wait too long because we would run out of food. See, I do like these odds. I mean, I would prefer oh. if we could also engineer some sort of situation that would improve the odds for us. Well, I don't know if they're friends with the lake monster or not. I mean, even if they're not falling into freezing water, probably is a super. We would have to engage them on the ice, though. How many of us could engage on ice? I can hmm. think of uh, four. And and the pr issue I would have is they wouldn't engage us on the ice. They have boats. They would shoot at us. Yeah. I mean, unless we could somehow lure them out. We do we have would... a force with cover, at least. We can force the engagement closer, if nothing yeah, else. They, they would want to fight on the hills. On the mountain. Also, fighting them on the ice is actually a disadvantage. They have sure-footed. They would fight yep. on the ice and, like, make us look stupid. Right, well, I mean, again, get them to fight on the ice and then break the ice out from under. Right. Hmm. Um, but they, but unfortunately, there wouldn't be a cover when we're on the ice, so they would definitely, like, you know... Lay well, winter rain. can provide the cover, ironically. Hmm. Well, we would have to wait for bad weather. What's the weather going to be like? Well, no, no, he, does, he doesn't mean winter the season, he means winter his, his manservant who has that um, aura of protection. Oh, uh, yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I mean, if you had the choice of, I have a bow, and, you know, would you go melee a bunch of people on the ice, or would you shoot at them until you ran out of arrows? Like you said, try to think of a better circumstance that aids us. Right. Uh, well, I mean, if we could get bad weather, we could do it. I mean, I would think that we'd be better off coming from above and descending, descending on them and pushing them back into the lake. Um, they are split hmm. up into three camps, and we do have darkness right now. If we were to press them, we could take them four at a time. And, and I'm we also... I can retreat, too. I would always assert that we want the Necromancer. Uh, if we can break the power of the Necromancer, that's what we're here for. The do rest you know of which them, camp would... they were at? Uh, the necromancer? Yes. I saw him wandering around. I'm guessing he was at the center camp, right? Yeah, you saw one sort of main camp by the lake. And uh, I only that's saw the was. one necromancer. So yes. you know, sometimes they travel in pairs of apprentice and master. So, um, I mean, it, you know, they've been here a while. And, like, there's, you know, 12 of them. There could easily be uh, others here as well. Right. Not to mention so we do that have our advantage. Then we know where not, they are, and we have a surprise. Right now, just so I can run your parade, don't forget they have a necromancer. A popular thing to do is to bury corpses around, and then just order them to come back up when it's time to fight. Because remember, as a necromancer, you can piss off the undead at any time. Right. I suppose this comes down to: Did you see any spots where it looks like stuff was buried? <laughs> and I guess also, I if only, we were to get in there, could I consecrate before they do? I only rolled one success. Yeah. Um, so, Couldn't get too uh, close. I'm guessing I saw plenty of places where stuff could be buried, but I don't know if there were latrines, garbage dumps, or bodies. Right. I mean, I'm just warning you, like, 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 I know no fear. I would be happy to go in there. I would be more worried about our hangers-on. Of what Nine of our hangers-on are bloodied, so I don't know if we want to leave the non-combatants behind or if we want to take them with us. None of them are bloody. Sorry, blooded. Mm. Uh, being a phrase of, I've gone to combat and gotten hurt, oh. so I'm not going to cry like a baby when I get stabbed. Sorry, we have a habit of saying things like that, meaning that they're injured or hurt. That's why I was confused. No, I, I meant blooded. Blood is different than bloody. And blooded can mean two different things. So. Yeah, blooded could also just mean having noble births. It could so, also mean having noble births. Blood, blood, doing a lot of... 
yeah, working overtime. Yeah, I'm usually using blooded as, as well, because it's implied that if you're a noble that you've been trained how to fight, because obviously you wouldn't just be an effete, ne'er-do-well noble who's never known the touch of steel. You've been training your entire life to defend the commoners. That's the entire principle. Mm. So enough of commoner sarcasm. Um, right. So you're saying there's 12 of them in three different camps? I saw I saw twelve. They were in three different camps, and they were kind of wandering around. Right? Twelve total, in three different camps, or twelve. I'm asking in 12. red. They're kind of yeah. wandering around, right? Yeah, they're they're yeah. milling about. Um, What's the mask? And yes, they, twelve. They, twelve they, of them across three different camps. They looked alert and defensive. So once we got within a certain range of them, uh, they would string their bows and probably have at us. I mean, again, I guess I suppose we could try to lure some out with our flyers. Uh, trying to cause a distraction with a, what would seem to be a frontal attack while we then attack somewhere else. That way uh, we, we can divide them up and then get into smaller fights. I mean, having skirmishes, they're, they're like, you know, mechanically there's an assist rule in the game. So having some of us act as a distraction so other people can, can scurry and get closer despite the fact they have no stealth is still a stealth bonus. So yes, that, that has a lot to merit it to show up uh, you know. Well, I mean, and, like, have three of our fighters, obviously we're not going to send you to a distraction too good of a fighter. Uh, send three no, of our, I, I, three would, of our be... fighters off to the south end of their encampment, and then act as though they're starting an attack down there, so yeah. that they pivot to defend from that end, and well, then we attack from the north. Therefore... Right, and, 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 and I would volunteer to lead that. Not only am I a flyer, but I'm also skilled in uh, deception and aggroing people that way. Right, but I'd also argue you're our second, third best fighter group, so... Well, I would start with the skirmish, we would sit there, well, hey, if we kill all, you know, hey, if my distraction kills a bunch of them, that's a victory too. Right, right, but I wasn't yeah. aiming for an actual distraction that stands up at fights. I mean, yeah. set them down there, have the other group, have whatever group comes down to uh, react to them so far separated that whoever we have attacked from the north can uh, get the attack in without those other uh, side coming up to regroup. Yeah, I mean, you are the boss. I, I will suggest I have all the skills necessary to lead that kind of diversion. Right, but I'm saying that the diversion is more important to that it just lures people away, not that it actually accomplishes any... Okay, you flash. can decide who's team diversion and decide who's uh, team assault. Well, in this case, I, I think... Yeah, sorry. Go. Oh, no, no, you're the GM. You think first. Oh, I was just going to say, we're probably not going to roll any dice on this today because we're coming up to the end of the session. Um, but we can come to, we can set up a plan and we can write that plan down so we know what it is next time. So it's not or like we can put a pin a in distraction. it. Yeah. We want to create a, a distraction to the south, lure people away to the southern edge of this what is a collection of encampments? I don't know. This territory. And then have... Uh, so that you create an angle for people to move in around the north side of the lake. And hopefully get at the Necromancer. Unguarded. Sounds Which... Like a plan. Yeah, it's not a terrible plan. Okay. Alright. So, that was our session. Good session, everybody. Thanks for playing. Let's do our debrief. Um... We're going to go down the line, and uh, I'll begin with our goals for the session. I don't think we cross anything off. We have remove the necromantic circle from the mountains. We have discover the whereabouts of ripe Dow. We have, uh, yes, and then confirm Frederick's suspicion about the lost air. Oh, yeah, we should ask them when we go back down there. Hey, have you seen a big bear around? Um, oh... <clears throat> Doki. So let's do the debrief. So we'll go through. Everyone will have a chance to uh, once again reintroduce their characters. And if you've got anything you'd like to toss in about the session, what went well, what could have gone better, now is your opportunity. We'll start with Ark. Hello, I am Markwood. I play Connor the Veridacrabis, the Brazen Raccoon Knight Errant, and Crusader. My goals were to uh, remove the Necromantic Circle in the Northwest Mountains. We haven't done that yet. Discover the whereabouts of Ripe Dow. Haven't done that yet. And confirm Frederick's suspicion about the lost air. I enjoyed the session today. And it's nice having a higher ranking noble than me, even though 
I did enjoy lording over you guys for some time now. <laughs> but to pass the reign to a more noble noble is... In fairness, I think it also matters what land we're in. True. And we are in your land. Or in more well, of your land than my land. We go back, well, I have, I have more allies here and you're wanted. So I think it's, yes. that's mm -hmm. the defer moment there. But I mean, we go back to the Avatar. It doesn't matter if I have 20 nobility gifts, you're still in your homeland and a noble. Right. right. Uh, yeah, I played the anonymous armadillo almoner. First, do no harm. Second, get paid. I saved someone's life. I enjoy how the shepherd are just a whole bunch of jerks. I just balk immediately at our attempts to, like, bypass without violence. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I did... I, I, I'm having fun with the Chevron Ace. I hope they're not too Klingon for anyone's taste, but they're definitely, like, the book just says, hey, they're not very nice, they don't like outsiders. That's basically all we get, and within that... I mean, they're I'm having modern fun. against Scottish Highlanders, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we're, we're not exactly looking to do Klingon promotion. They're just untrustworthy of everybody. Or a bad Scottish accent, I'm not asking for that either. Right, I've tried to... Well, <laughs> my bad. Hooray! Accent. Hooray. Um, yeah. No, I mean, as a side note, I'll say, I always... The, the best that I can do when combating harmful stereotypes in these games is to try to keep in mind that everybody is a person and that people around the world are generally good and shitty in equal parts in comparable ways. So um, try not to present them as irredeemable or anything, but still, from the perspective of you guys, they're probably, they should seem a little bit just not fun to be around. Well, we're technically so, trespassers. We have no people, right yeah. to be here. Yeah, they're people with goals. They're people with uh, personalities, people with general vague desires or habits. Uh, we're yeah. trying everyone as good and evil doesn't work. Uh, though the necromancy goes, I'm going to murder everyone, is maybe gone a little over the Well, the I think the major problem with the necromancer is you're more valuable to me if you're not alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, they are the ultimate slavers. So Exactly. Right. Okay, uh, next up we got Raph. I know no fear and serve with joy. So, um, yeah, I've all, but uh, I made it clear. I can't believe you in like, well, I'll hesitate and see what the undead do. Apparently they'll get blown apart by lightning. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's hey, good. Hey, I'm your artillery support. You protected me by going in front, so I gave you support. Not only your artillery support, you are specifically holy artillery support. Like, yeah, right. you wait for the range to go off, and then you move in. Exactly. So. There's always the moment where I think, ooh, did I throw too many people at this fight? Is this going to just be and long, tedious, and deadly? And then I'm just like, oh, wait, no, <laughs> the doctor's here with all of they his holy magic. They can and did still roll better than me at times. They did, no. It was a good fight. It was a fight with the potential to have been the whole session, <laughs> but it didn't, I think, largely in part thanks to your um, repudiation. The thing, your thing we're always worried about is, I'm always worried about losing the hangers on, because we have. Um, yeah. Gorbelly will always be on my mind. Right, we do have a certain amount of chaff before things start coming for us specifically Don't call them every time. Chaff. Don't say the word chaff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. A blade Meat of armor, shield. perhaps. Shield. So, a blade of... So that my blade of friend. No. I mean, I always... You, you, see, you, you can tell I'm always trying to confront this like for people. Like, yeah. you know, like it, 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 it's the real... Well, that's why I'm trying to minimize risk and loss to people, because you know, just yeah. throwing our lives away. Uh... I mean, that's not part of my motto, but uh, it, I, Anushka, I think, is somebody who, like, I would like to solve all of these problems with the minimum amount of bloodshed. I mean, I'm willing to kill you, but I'd rather not. We yeah, won't I be popular fair... if all of our stories are suicide stories. Um, right. You only get to tell a suicide story once. Otherwise, you're bad at it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Last but not least, we got Theta. Yep. Here's Gar. More than the sum of any one of my uh, job titles. <laughs> I want to say that uh, before I got shoved out of the negotiations with the uh, Chevronese, which, by the way, worked out in the end because I have a long conversation now to have in my insurance company, but um, uh, before that, my ploy was going to be that I was going to negotiate on the point of the iron mine because apparently mm. it means a lot to them, and we just had the whole talk about uh, yeah about how it's very valuable to them because they can't get it very much. And then I have a lot of very important information about the tactics and military structure that's being used to fight against them that I thought Ooh, would be very useful as a way in on them. <laughs> it's like, like you don't have uh, 
You don't have this gift. You're out. All right. Yeah. Man. I did do a lot of talking this session. It's fair. I, I do it's apologize for that situation because that's where you shine as the talker. And that is not a bad angle. Um, and it definitely plays to the by strength or guile because um, you would be. Every time it seems like Adris is forming allegiances. Um, well, what I'm trying to say is that I like that he's not rigid. Like he understands how to play the situation the best that he can with the hands that he has been dealt. That's, you know. Well, that's what I was thinking the moment I said, I got to remember. I got to stop hating them so much as the character, the Chevronets, and think more yes. diplomatically. That's what I thought of immediately. Diplomatically, okay, well, I. This is really going to hurt the chances of the guy that I like doing the thing that he needs to do, but it will forward the mission, and in the long term, I can play this out a different way. I think politics yeah. has got the diplomacy. Yeah. You'll definitely at least have another chance for that later. Well, I mean, I mean I'd rather not. You guys well, made it in, and that's fine enough. I'd rather <laughs> these guys get murdered in the upcoming war and not have to worry about it at all. But... Yeah, let's not forget that's that's still like conflict is still happening. As you guys trekked north, the people were moving, and hopefully Fletcher's on his way, and they're consolidating their forces to the south as well. Um, and against supernatural units. Yeah. Yep. And we have to find the. Uh, oh yeah, Rutherd should be here. I guess we got a minus uh, minus one. Rutherd still should have been left behind. Mm -hmm, right. Helping. Uh, yes. Well. Finding the uh, Lord Ashton units that are supposed to be up here also aiding. All I've done in the last three or four sessions is organize the situation that this war is fought in. So, And that's what your character's meant to do, so you're doing it great. <laughs> right, I just really need to make sure that that's all going according to plan. And that's why it was going to be a weird... The only way I can figure out how to get into here is to sell out the war that I'm already... You know, play both sides of the war. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, I just had a thought. I'm making a note. But I can do that in a second. So, yeah, you guys, uh, let's do the wrap-up. So everybody... Whoa, cat fight. So everybody, two XP for the session, one for playing your characters superbly, and one for showing up, which is always appreciated. Um, no goals accomplished today, but next time, we're going to fight some dark, evil wizards, and we Thank will... You. Yeah, get moving on that. So until next week, thank you all for playing and for watching, and we'll uh, see you soon, right? Yep. See you next time, everybody. Bye.